Hello, and welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. But it's Monday, so I'm coming to you from my house. And I had a request for a video on how to change colors at the beginning of a row, especially when you're working in the round, maybe on something fancy like this. And I hope this is going to address her concern of gaps when you change colors. And if not, please let me know if I need to do a follow-up video, that kind of thing. So this is the beginning of my round on this very fancy, only two colors on each row, but lots of colors happening. And here's what the inside of it looks like. I'm carrying a lot of colors because there's nine colors involved and I wanna have as few ends to weave in as possible. So I have this funky line of wrapping colors around each other. Now I want to show you on something that's not as complicated and we're going to look at some pictures. This one was a little hard to try to draw out for you. So that, that part might not take as long because the pictures, I don't know how well they do, but let me know what you think on the other side. We'll talk about it on the other side and drop me some comments below. Let's get to it. So changing colors at the beginning of a row, say you're going to do two or three rows of one color and then two or three rows of a second, and then you want to change them back again. Carrying the colors up the, the back or the wrong side, so carrying them, instead of cutting every time you need to switch colors, carrying them up the wrong side of the work, the inside, can minimize, can cut down on the number of ends you have to weave in. And if you're not careful, or if you're not sure of what's going on, you definitely can get holes and gaps. That's what we're trying. We're trying to minimize these too. Holes and gaps can happen, but they don't have to. And this isn't completely guaranteed to stop them from happening, but it should cut down on them. Some of it has to do with tension. And a lot of it has to do with twisting the yarns around each other. But here's the trick is you always want to twist them in the same direction. It doesn't matter. With, with color work going across a row, keeping them going up and down in parallel is great. But when you're trying to keep a hole from happening, you want to twist them and you always want to do it in the same direction. And here's the way that I remember it. Here's the way that I keep holes from happening. This helps with intarsia. This helps with changing colors at the beginning of a row. And intarsia is where you have like a lump of color in the middle and you have to switch between color A, and color B, and maybe color A again, not carry color A across. Anyway, that could be a different video. If you want to see it, let me know. So old over new, what that means is that the yarn that you're currently using, the old is current yarn or present yarn. New is future yarn. And if you take old over the new and the new one comes up from underneath old one goes that when it goes over it goes over to the left the new comes up from under to the right you're always twisting them in the same direction no matter what color you're holding in your hand and if that's confusing just remember old over new we're going to practice it i'll try to explain it in the pictures but seeing it with actual yarn may help the best. So sometimes that gap though is still there. It isn't hidden until the yarn is swapped again. So there might be a, a gap and then the next time you pull the yarn up, it will disappear. A lot of it has, has to do with tension, which is this be careful of pulling your yarn too tight because you're worried about those holes. We wanna go for regular, would help if I don't try to talk and write at the same time. Regular tension. The yarn that's carried up the back, you want it to just be long enough to go to the next place. If it's really tight, it will squish everything together. So let's take a look at some pictures. You know I love the pictures. So here's a view kind of looking down on the top. We can see the back here. We can see the front here. So in the front, we have these stitches. I did stretch things out a little bit to try to show you what's going on. And let's color code this a little bit. So let's say 
that the current yarn that we just knit around the row with was orange, which means this yarn, which is coming off this last stitch, our current yarn is orange. We could even say maybe we've already knit another round with the orange too. And the row underneath, This yarn that's hanging down connected to a row or two below is blue. So this is the yarn we've just finished with. It's the current yarn. This, which could have been old yarn, you know, if we think about it that way, this is our future yarn. And this yarn, the old one needs to go over the future yarn needs to come up from underneath. They're going to swap places, but the old one comes over to the left. The new future yarn is going to come up from underneath. Here's what that will look like when these have swapped places in a way, but you always twist in the same direction. This is why it may not show so well in the pictures. This yarn has moved over. This yarn is coming up. It's really making sure they've twisted. If this yarn had simply been picked up and you just started knitting with it without twisting them over each other, you probably would have a hole here. Now this picture, I haven't shown us moving forward. Once you move forward a bunch of times, if we turned it over, these are the front side. If we turned it over and looked at the back side after quite a few transitions, here's what it would look like. Let's say we had actually picked up with the blue. This is our blue right here that is going on to knit these stitches. The orange is hanging out here from where it's been twisted. If you're doing it correctly, you will see the yarns twisting around each other like this on the back side. Always twisting old over the new that's being picked up. The old coming over and the new coming up from underneath is going to create a twist like that. You can see every time it happened there. If the twisting didn't happen and they were picked up just from wherever they fell, you would see something more like the picture here. Where yarn is moving up over some rows, but it's not twisting around the other yarn. This is where holes can happen. This is where we can have gaps. Because they're not twisting around each other to tighten that up. When they move up parallel this direction, you can have holes. When you twist, you can keep those holes from happening or minimize them. This is also where if you pull really tight before you start knitting, you might have puckering. Let's see what it looks like with real yarn. So here's my sample with thick, big yarn and I'm doing about two rows of each color. And I'm just about to finish my second row with the teal. Here is my stitch marker, could move that. And if we look back here, here is my oatmeal cream color. And what I want to do, I want to take the yarn I'm finished with, my old yarn, I want to take it over the top, finding my cream yarn here, of my cream yarn is going to come up from underneath. The old goes over the top of it. and I can start knitting. 
you can see here, I didn't do any jogless joins, so there's a little bit of wonkiness when we jump colors. That's a whole nother video. But for the most part, if we follow this column down, there's no holes there. And if we turn it to look at the back side, you can see this color goes straight up because I just did it. But just like the picture, here's the yarn I just stopped with. It's trapped underneath the yarn that floated up. And each one of these crisscrosses right there. I mean, I haven't done very many rows, right? But there's a slant to it. Let's see if I do the next one. We'll just have some quick knitting here. I'll speed this part up in post editing. But let me go around two rows and then let's see what happens if I don't twist them. One row down, one more to go. And I, before I go on, I do want to point out right now, this looks a little gappy right here, right? Part of that will be fixed if I snug this back yarn up when the next twist happens. Let's keep going and let's see what happens if we don't twist it. All right, I'm back to the stitch marker again. But now if I just drop this yarn, instead of taking it over to the left, I'm just going to drop it. And I'm going to look under here and I'm going to pick up this yarn. If I can, whoop, if I just pick it straight up and I haven't twisted these, I'm just picking it up to go ahead and knit with it. We may not, again, we may not know until we get a little further, but look already. This might happen anytime we start or stop, there's going to be a hole there. Let's do the same thing. Let me knit two rows and try again without twisting to just pick up the next color. One row down. Okay, I'm back here. Again, even if I tighten this up, I still have a little bit of a hole. Now this one, let's leave this one off to the side again and pick up. See that hole is still there. Down here where I was doing the twisting, there's not as much that's noticeable. But if I don't twist them again and I just drop one where it lays and I pick up the next one, I've got a hole here and we can kind of see what's going on. We've got stranding here too. And it's a good chance if I do that again, I'm going to get holes again. That's what happened when I didn't twist them. Down here is what happened when I did. And if we look on the back side, doesn't quite look like the picture of what I thought it would look like. We have some twisties. We don't have things running parallel necessarily, but we do have holes. The idea of letting things just run straight up, though, is going to lead to weird 
ladders and holes. So there you have it. What I do when I am changing yarns, see there on the back, is I'm pretty intentional about twisting and always twisting in the same direction. So I hope that was helpful to you. If you have things that you would like me to do with either knit or crochet, please leave a comment below. We had someone who was interested in different um, textured stitches that aren't stockinette, which is knitting on one side and purling on the other, that um, might not add to thicker fabric. And that one's going to be a tough one. I'm going to try next week. I wouldn't say that it won't be thicker fabric. We could maybe go over the linen stitch or just a couple of basic stitches to just liven up what you're working on. But anytime you mix knits and purls on the same row, you're going to get something a little thicker. So there's not much that can be done about that. But we can talk about that maybe next week. That was more prep work than I could do this week. So I'm also looking for crochet ideas. If you'd like to, this channel is growing by leaps and bounds and I'm so thankful for that. If you'd like to become a Patreon, you can see my patrons at the end, the ones who are supporting this channel and the sideshow that I filmed with Liz. You should check that out too, by the way. If you'd like to support the work that we do, please go over to patreon.com slash sundragon and consider subscribing for a monthly fee. Or just subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That doesn't cost you a thing. And it all helps in the end. Anyway, may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence as always. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye. What do you think, Kitty? Yeah, it's kind of what I thought. <laughs> Good kitty. Yeah, look at those whiskers. Oh, oh.